Welcome back people to Bun and Cheese Reviews. This week is a new week on basketball. And it is my top five rising talents in the sport. Now there's been a lot of rising talents coming through recently so I thought this would be the perfect video to do next for my third week of the game. And um, I think, I, obviously I did this video for football and I said anybody below the age of 21. But I had to stretch that up to 23 for basketball simply because you start in the league a little bit later than you do in football. So I had to give them more, give myself more area to put better players in there. So I think everybody on this list should be 23 and below. Depending when this video comes out, that means actually. So let's stop all the talking, all the babbling as I always say, and get straight into the list. Number five. Jason Tatum, the third overall pick of the 2017 draft, which in my opinion is one of the better ones of the last few years. It was the Boston Celtics that drafted him and he has excelled there ever since. It was the most recent 19-20 to season where he achieved his highest points per game average at 23.4. This was also the same season which saw him score a career best of 39 in a blowout win against the Charlotte Hornets. He excels in dribbling the ball shown with vast amounts of shots he opens up for himself in the paint and also showcased by winning the 2019 skills challenge in the All-Star weekend which I may add was one of my favourite All-Star weekends of recent years. The reason he is bottom of this list is because of, out of all the young players to come, I think he's on the best team with the best roster by far, so it's easier to put up better numbers, especially in assists with teammates like Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward and Kemba Walker to link up with. Number 4, Zion Williamson. Zion is a fitting of a name for a man of his stature. His name was all over the press, even over here in the UK before he was drafted in 2019. This is because of his weight listed as 129 kilograms. You wouldn't expect him to be explosive, but that's all he is utilizing raw power and speed to just bulldoze his way through opponents and score some of the most aggressive dunks you'll ever see. Both NBA players and coaches have praised him for his athleticism he displays, some saying he's the best high school player since Jordan. But unfortunately, after being drafted by the Pelicans as a number one pick, he got injured during pre-season and has only played 24 games all season. He still managed to average a decent 22.5 points per game, but I can't help but think if he doesn't adapt his style of play, more injuries could be on the way through just getting flashbacks of Derrick Rose and obviously he had nowhere near as much muscle mass as Zion. Signing a $75 million shoe deal with Jordan is the second biggest rookie deal in history just before LeBron James and I think that's pretty appropriate seeing how his style of play literally tore his shoes apart in college. I couldn't help feel genuine happiness for him when I watched the draft and he showed his emotion realising how much of a big deal being an NBA player meant to him. Number 3, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan was in the 2017 draft, same as Jason Tatum, and funny enough, he was only the 13th pick, the lowest of everybody on this list. And I have no idea why. He was actually picked by Denver Nuggets, but got traded straight away to the Utah Jazz, who obviously were the only team in the league to see the potential in him. And is it a surprise that the New York Knicks was one of them not to see the potential? He has improved his conversion rate every season so far, recording 20.5, 22 22.8 and 24 points per game on averages across his first three seasons. Even in his rookie season, he broke MJ's record of most points by a shooting guard in the first two postseason games and scored 57 and 51 points in the 19-20 postseason, becoming only the third player in history to score 50 or more in a playoff series. I love his style of play as he's able to both shoot from deep well and also drive into the box and score in the paint well. His athleticism makes it all look so damn easy. I strongly believe he's a special player and we have much more to see from him from the upcoming seasons. Number 2. Trey Young Trey was the 5th overall pick of the 2018 draft, initially selected by the Mavericks but was traded to the Atlanta Hawks. And oh boy what a deal that has been for both of them since. 
but we'll get more on that later. Ending his rookie season with 19.1 points per game average with a really impressive haul of 49 points and 16 assists against the Chicago Bulls during this time. But I have to be a bit of a downer and mention this was during quadruple overtime, but still impressive enough for me to be like, wow, a little at the point. It was his second season where I really started to notice though, with him starting off scoring 38 points on the season opener and forcing overtime to Pacers with 49 points the following month. Towards the end of the season, he hit 50 points, which was a career high and helped him get the 29.6 points per game average across the season. A great stat for somebody that's one in their second season, two with the Atlanta Hawks, and three is only six foot one. Need I add that is also a great three point shooter, which is naturally harder for someone that short. He's living proof that Steph Curry has had a massive impact on the league for good. Come on, you really thought I'd go a basketball video without mentioning Steph Curry? Number one, Luka Donich. See, I told you I'd get back to this 2018 trade. I love it when foreign players come into the league and shock everybody at how good they are. And that is exactly what's happened with Luca. He played professional basketball for three years before joining the NBA in 2018. And boy, does his experience show. But before getting onto that, let's get into his draft. Being in the same draft as Trey Young, he was initially selected by the Hawks as third overall. And they traded picks with the Mavericks for Young which I said before has worked extremely well for both teams. In his rookie season, he averaged 21 points per game, six assists and one steal, earning him Rookie of the Year award. And then in his second season, he drastically improved on nearly every statistic, averaging 28.8 points per game across the regular season. I'm writing this script just before game six of the playoffs against the Clippers, hoping he can pull the series in Dallas's favour. I fully watched game four as Luca really turned up here, forcing the series to go on longer through a triple double of 43 points, 17 rebounds, and 13 assists. And a crazy three pointer that was a game winner in overtime, giving his team more of a fighting chance against the big hitters Kawhi and PG 13. He's undoubtedly a superstar in the making and maybe even a future Hall of Famer. And that is it for. The rising stars in basketball. Whenever the draft comes around, I try and I, I, I try and do a bit of research on who is good and you know who isn't so good and see what's going on. Like I remember I did my research back in the day on um, Josh Jackson, who signed for I want to say it's the Phoenix Suns. And I was thinking, yo, he looks like a quite good, quite good player. I don't think he's you know he's been pushing on so much yet. I did my research on R.J. Barrett, who did sign for the New York Knicks. Again, someone that I thought was good at the time, but I don't think he has been pushing on so far. So, rising stars in basketball, these are my top five, and I think these have probably got the most potential as of this video. As you'll see in this, it is in the next season, so somebody else has probably come along and completely tore it up. But I will leave it there, and I will say, um, next week is going to be our last week in basketball, and it will be something... Uh, maybe a bit different to what I've done previously. So I will see you then.